Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we've got a question that comes up quite often. It's how to style the response message after you send a form, because it's pretty generic looking. If I fill out this form, I'll put in my email. And we'll just say test. Fill out the capture there. What's that? Eight. And hit the submit. It pops up with a little message. Thank you for reaching out. We'll reply ASAP. I mean, it's okay. It works, gets the message across, but it really doesn't look any good. So I'm going to change that from looking like that to something that looks more like that. Really easy to do. We've got to do a bit of coding to do this today, but any code I write, I'll put down below. You're welcome to copy paste, use as you will. So let's enable the visual builder. And I'm going to go down. I'm going to delete this contact form and we'll start from scratch. I've got a section, the blue tab. Inside the section, I've got a row with a single column. And let's go down and let's grab a contact form. There we go, right there. I'm not going to mess with it too much. All I'm going to do is put in a success message. This is where you put in the message that you want to pop up after they sent it. So let's put in the same thing as I had before. Thank you for reaching out. We'll reply to your message. Obviously, we need to put in an email. It's not going to work. Email address. That's where you want it to be sent to. Message pattern is you can decide how the you receive the messages and what you see in your email. We've done a video on that before. That's all I'm going to do to this form. Let's save it. Let's save the page changes. Let's exit the visual builder. Okay, well, there's our contact form. Let's do the same as we did before. Fill out the catcher. And submit it. Okay, well, there's our little message. I'm using Google Chrome here with the great inspector tools. Most browsers have this nowadays, but if yours doesn't, Chrome is a free download. I'm going to right click and inspect it. And there it is in our console. And if we look over here, it's got a class of ETPB contact message, but we're targeting the actual P paragraph text there so let's click on the paragraph text let's style it the way we want it well the first thing i'd like to have happen is perhaps put it in the middle so i'm going to say text align center as you can see that's popped that in the center now like i say i'll put this down below anything you don't like just simply delete the line that you don't like or change what you do like let's make it a bit bigger let's say font size I'll make mine say 20 pixels. Great. You can change the font family if you want to to a different type of font, but I'm going to leave mine on the default there. You just put font family and the new font family that you want in there. Let's give it a background color. So I'm going to say background. For this, I want to actually use my logo blue that I've got up here. Let's grab a color picker. I've got a chrome color picker. I'll copy that and we'll put that back in background colon put the hex code in there fantastic can't really read that text very well so let's say color I'm going to make mine white obviously you make yours whatever color you wish that's better we can read it but it's not really taking up much real estate. There's not much going on on this page. I like it to be fairly deep. So let's add some padding. To do that, I'm just going to say padding top. I'm going to use viewable height for mine. I'm going to say sort of 20 VH, 20 VH, which is sort of 20% of the viewable height of the screen here, which isn't very much at the moment, but that'll work. And I want similar on the bottom. I've actually got 29 now. I want 20. But again, of course, that's entirely up to you. Now, I noticed down here, padding bottom, we've already got something for that. So I'm going to have to force this if I want to change that padding zero on the bottom. So let's just drop down one more. I'll say padding bottom. 
And again, I want 20, viewable height. It's worked, but because of this style here, I know I'm going to have to put important on the end. So I'm going to put a gap after the H there, exclamation mark, important. Don't like to use that if I don't have to, but in some cases you just have to. So that's shaping up a little bit there. Let's just curve these borders. Remember, this will look a lot deeper actually when I get rid of the inspector here because we'll have more of a percentage of viewable height. So let's give it some curved corners. I'll use border radius for that. That's great. And let's perhaps add a little bit of box shadow underneath it. And like I say, just remove anything that you don't want. Just select the line when we code it in a minute. Just delete it. So I'm going to say box shadow. And let's perhaps give it four picks. Why right, 10 picks? Why right, 20 picks? I'm going to make mine a sort of light gray or medium gray. Or maybe a seven. There we go. We've got a bit of a box shadow under there. Great. Well, I'm going to copy this because I, as soon as I refresh this page, this will all disappear because it's just in our live browser here. So I'm going to copy all of that code. Control C. Let's get rid of our inspector now. And as you can see, we got rid of the inspector. Our 20 VH is a lot bigger because we've got a bigger screen here. Great. Well, let's go in there now. Enable the visual builder. And I'm going to put this code into a code module. We only want this on this page because this is the only page that the contact form is on. If you want to, you can put this in your additional CSS panel and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So let's add a little code module. There we go. We're using CSS code for this today, so I need to open and close some style tags. And I can't put the style tags down below the video because of the pointy brackets. But if you're using a code module, it's just left pointy, the word style, and right pointy bracket. Once you put that in, it'll put in the closing one. Only difference is that's got a forward slash in front of the style there. Inside, what well, we want to target the actual class. And the class name itself was, all class names have a dot or a period. It was ET, PB, and a contact message. And we were targeting the paragraph text after it, which is P. Let's open and close some curly brackets. Inside those curly brackets, we can just paste that code we copied there. Great. Well, let's save our changes. We'll save the page changes again. And exit the Visual Builder. And we'll try that one more time. Email. And this is test three. 15 and 13, I think that's 28. And hit the submit. And there we go, it's popped up with that. Now that's a lot more interesting than the generic bit of text that pops out there. And of course, once you refresh the page, it'll go back to the contact form again. For anybody that wants to put that code inside the additional CSS panel, I'll show you how to do that. Let's enable the visual builder again. While that's enabling, I'm going to go down to my dashboard. Let's go to the dashboard over here. I'm going to go down to Appearance, to Customize. That's going to take us to this page here. Right at the bottom, you'll see additional CSS. I've got something in there. Contact form seven styles, it looks like. I'm going to shoot that down a couple just with my return key. Now, if we go back to our page, let's get that code. Now, code modules don't take up any real estate, so sometimes you have difficulty getting to them or finding them on a page. If that's the case, easiest way is to hit the little purple button. Left-hand side here, we've got wireframe view. If you select it, it takes you to the back end. There's your little code module right there. You go in there. Once you're in there, you can go back to desktop or wherever you want to go. Okay, well, here's our code that we wrote there. Don't need the style tags. And we want to copy this from the dot of the ETPB contact message all the way to that closing curly bracket there. Let's copy that. We'll go back. 
always a good idea to give your CSS a title to do that. It's forward slash star star forward slash. Anything that you want to write in between the two stars will not be read as code. Let's see success. And we'll drop down and just paste the code in there. Great. And we need to publish. And that's it, job done. That'll work. Like I say, we're only using it on this one page here. Great. Well, we don't need it in two places, so I'm going to select that and delete it. Put it back to how it was because we've already got it on this page in the code module. Great. Well, there you go, guys. There is how to style your success message for your Divi contact form with a bit of CSS. Really easy to do. And like I say, you're welcome to copy that code, modify it and use it how you wish. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.